members of the drone for bridge, uh, bridge inspections and uh, firefighting. Our team leader is uh, Raquel Ramton, uh, Ramon uh, Cordero, Daniel Villanueva, and myself, Larry March. The bonus statement for motivation was basically to design uh, a car culture that was to be able to do firefighting by designing uh, the club, but doing different, uh, with the different type of uh, designs. Basically, at the end, we did uh, 3D printing to be able to do for the firefighting. And also for the bridge inspections, we developed, we had to put a camera that we have to be make it easier to go to do different type of inspections, not only bridges, but any type of structures. Uh, the, global, the global awareness, basically the impacts on, on safety, is that I, as this technology is changing, uh, a lot of things are coming out, and if we could use the, I don't know, uh, a system like this to do different type of inspections for different type of infrastructures, it will make it more easier and uh, safer for different uh, uh, an engineer, anybody that's going to do some type of, uh, uh, sorry, that's going to do some, some type of testing, it will be easier just to go ahead and, and, do, and be able to use some type of, this, of design like this. Some of those designs could be like, a, again, bridge aerial inspections, uh, search and rescue, to do uh, so, uh, uh, even an uh, inspection on a roof, or any type of uh, infrastructure that we could use to any structures that we'll be able to, on the IFA rules, uh, I know right now uh, on the section uh, 333 for the IFA that has some, that has some regulations that I hopefully will come out and change a little more to be able to do more with our design. The, the global engagement in the tax economy, again, since the technology is changing, the materials are even are now are cheaper and different uh, technologies are coming out. Like we have here a sample of Amazon or DSL, which has to have some prototypes that, that's the, what they want to do in, in the future. And again, with the FAA regulations to be able to do the, 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 the proposed designs that they want to do. Uh, the global engagement in the markets, again, uh, technology is changing and, everything, and the materials and everything are getting uh, even cheaper and uh, uh, technolo like, technology is changing every day. Okay, so a basic overview of the quadcopter design is a X quadcopter. Um, this was a, hand a handout from a previous um, senior design group. It used to be a six quadcopter and it used to be really bigger. I mean, a much bigger, but they, they cut they cut some of the, some of the struts out and they made it to a X X X so quadcopter. Uh, I made it smaller because actually it was way bigger than this. Um, for the autopilot, it used to have an APM 2.5. The APM 2.5 was a little bit too too laggy and too old, and it wasn't really responding well with the, with the computer system. So I went ahead and went with the Pixar, which is uh, pretty much like top of the line right now. Um, that's uh, the autopilot that controls the signals to the motors as well as uh, sends the data between the computer and <laughs> between the computer and the this is the GPS system. It allows it for autonomous, autonomous flight. Of course, you set the waypoints in the program. The program talks to the, to the autopilot, to the GPS system. It sends the, it sends the quadcopter to fly. This is what uh, transmits data between the, the drone and the computer, which are, I, it's a telemetry kit. It uh, currently is 930 megahertz. It, you could use either 400 megahertz or 930, but there's, there's issues with that depending on the cell phone. Um, Depending where you are, too. In the US, I think you could use 900 and above. In Europe, you could use 400. You can't use 900. This is the video SD system. Basically, it allows you to, uh, to let the computer receive a uh, signal from the camera so that you can see uh, first person view of the flight. Uh, the, uh, this are the ESCs, the electric, electric speed controllers to the motors. They're 45 amps. Of course, um, this um, regulates the current to the to the motors. Uh, on board we had a power. Well, the battery is a six cell battery, twenty two point two volt. Um, and, uh, it's a eight hundred eight eight amp eight amp battery. Uh, to uh, distribute that we have a power distribution board from three DR. Um, it regulates power to the to the to the autopilot as well as the. It sends power to, to all the different ESCs. This is a power module. This allows for uh, 
the regulation of the power to the to the autopilot itself. The autopilot can't run on 22.2 .2 volts because it'll burn, of course. It runs on 5.4 volts. So this regulates from 22.2 .2 volts to 5.4 volts and also allows you to recurrent as well as battery, which is important when you're in flight. Excellent. This is the motors. It's a uh, 480 multi, um, 480. Yeah, because currently we have 420s. 480s um, multi star uh, motors. Um, of course, uh, 480 means kV, so if you multiply the 480 times the voltage that you have, you end up getting your RPMs. From there, you can calculate different um, uh, thrust values depending on the size of, the, of your propellers. Uh, before we had, this was a hand me down also from school. We had this radio controller from Spectrum DXA. It has this eight channel um, eight channel controller. Well, the antenna was previously broken somehow, so it kind of like had uh, laggy uh, connection. So uh, we were flying it and it crashed. So we kind of had to switch controllers. So we went ahead and and uh, somebody lent me this uh, six channel controller and we connected it to it. Uh, this is a little overview of the system, the autopilot radio setup. Um, you can tell the radio, the radio controller is connected to the autopilot system as well as the telemetry kit and the um, GPS system as well as the OSD. For the power setup, we have the battery which sends power to the power distribution board. I mean, to the power module which regulates the power between the between the the autopilot and the power distribution. It sends 22 points of volts to to the power distribution board and it says 5.4 volts to the other one. The ESCs are connected to the power distribution board and it sends the current to your, to your boards. All right, so the release, the release mechanism was one of the most important parts of our design. Basically, um, as shown here, is all the components that make up the release mechanism and the respective quantity. And um, the way that we designed all the components was to start with 2013, which we then manufactured it through 3D printing, which took about an average of four to six hours to 3D print all the components. The material we used was polyactic acid, also known as PLA. And the reason we use this material is because it provides high quality prints. It also um, is easily recycled and it can be easily reused. And as well as um, it had the properties that we needed for our application. Now the bottom is just a basic animation of the explode view and how um, all the components come together to assemble our release mechanism. Now some unique parts of our release mechanism is basically that it has four links, but if you re remove two links from it, it could still grab objects efficiently. And also, if you notice, um, the grippers, they could easily be redesigned in and, and, and any shape or form that you would like for the certain type of object that, that you want. So that, that's how it's assembled. And then um, this was our final design, as you can see there. Um, here you have the entire body, the, everything assembled. Um, in terms of the release mechanism, the motors, propellers, you have um, the camera on top and the e-light bulb on the bottom, but one of the things to come out from here is um, the casing. The casing was very important, and the reason that we um, built the case is because, first of all, it provides a uh, unique style to our quadcopter, and not only that, it also provides protection to our the hardware and the control system, system, which is inside. And as you can see here, this is basically the type of motion that our quadcopter will be doing when it's in the air. Um, the release mechanism opening up and down, the, the propellers rotating clockwise and counterclockwise, as well as um, the camera moving um, side to side. Um, basically here, um, so how does our release mechanism work? Well basically our release mechanism works that it has a lead screw stepping motor inside of it. And um, it will rotate clockwise and counterclockwise depending on the polarity. So if you change the polarity, it will change the rotation. So what we had to do was we had to make a, a, a certain casing, as you can see on your, on your left side. And this casing had installed a servo motor and a 9-volt um, battery, which um, the, both the positive and negative wiring would be um, connected to that hook-like mechanism um, in the middle, and it would um, oscillate, which would change the polarity of the claw in um, this manner right here, as you can see, the oscillation. And when this is oscillating, basically, it would um, make the claw rotate clockwise and counterclockwise, depending on you know the change of polarity. And through that um, counterclockwise and clockwise motion, it will provide a linear motion on the middle component, uh, which will open and close the claw. All right, and these are some of the tests that we did. Um, basically, um, our first test was with the um, gripper on the left side. The gripper on the left side did not have enough surface area, nor did it have enough texture that would provide um, 
enough friction for it to grab onto the ball. So as you can see, the first test fell. Um, we then modified our gripper to the one that you see on the right side. Um, we provided more texture, which provided more friction. We also um, we also changed the surface area. We made it longer so it will go more towards the bottom of the, of the Eli ball, which will make it easier for it to grab. And then um, the last one is basically um, it is assembled to our quadcopter and it's grabbing the, the Eli ball. And also you will see soon that the camera will start rotating clockwise and counterclockwise. So these are some of the anim animations that we did and some of the things that our, our release mechanism and camera could do. So one of our most important analysis would be our thermal analysis because obviously we want to use this quadcopter for firefighting. Obviously, you can't use this quadcopter in large scale fires because the updraft would be too violent in order for a quadcopter to fly in it. So we just did a basic analysis and discovered that updraft temperatures range between 60 to 100 degrees Celsius. And these are usually in forest fires. So obviously the smaller the fires are, the more likely it's going to, the heat's going to dissipate, so the temperatures will actually be a little bit lower than this range. And we went in to also ensure that all of our components will be able to maintain the integrity in these temperature ranges. So we didn't have much worry with the carbon fiber because carbon fiber can maintain the integrity up to about 2200 degrees Celsius, but the epoxy that binds the carbon fiber can start to soften at roughly about 100 degrees Celsius. So we need to make sure that we keep our temperatures nothing higher than 100 degrees Celsius. The PLA also can withstand temperatures above 250 degrees Celsius. And our major limiting factor would be our fire extinguishing grenade. The way that it detonates is once it reaches above a certain temperature, it just releases the, the chemical powder within it. And that is supposed to happen at about 82 degrees Celsius. We all know that manufacturers sometimes vary with this. So our, our prescribed operating temperature should be no greater than 60 or 70 degrees, which is still within a relatively close distance to a fire to, to release this mechanism. Now another important part would be the force analysis with the rotors. We need to make sure that we could find propellers with the right radius in order to lift the entire mechanism. Now the weight of the quad copter is roughly 49 newtons with the fire extinguishing grenade and everything on it. So with the four rotors, we were able to determine that the minimum, right below the minimum amount of thrust needed to lift, the quadcopter would be about 12.23 newtons. And using the equation shown here, we can determine that the minimum radius of the rotors can, has to be at least 0 0.055 meters, and our current radius of our rotors are about 0.118 meters. And another important part would be to be able to maintain the actual mechanical integrity of the claw mechanism. So the, the fire extinguishing grenade is roughly about 1.4 uh, kilograms in mass. So we would have to be able to withstand lifting this grenade with this claw mechanism. Basically dividing that weight by four would be the amount of force that's acting on each of the grippers, which is roughly 3.43 newtons per gripper. Now plugging this, this, these numbers into solid work simulations, we were able to determine the these stresses are between 104, or 112 and 117 kilopascals, which is relatively small as minor. We aren't going to be worried about that. And here, very small print, the yield strength of the material, the PLA, is 45 megapascals. So it's, it's really well within the range. This is our strain simulation. The strain, likewise, is very similar. Both minimum and maximum, the average is roughly 28.5 microstrains. And our safety factor, you can see, is 383.9 as our lowest safety factor. So we should have absolutely no failure within the material mechanically. And our deformation analysis is within micrometers. Um, it's going to be roughly 0.245 for the minimum. The maximum is barely 0 0.01 micrometers, more than that. So the fabrication, um, the, the structural components of the quadcopter can be fabricated um, using carbon fiber tubing and plates. There are about three plates of carbon fiber, circular plates, that are stacked upon each other in which the electrical components are, are placed onto these. These were manufactured two specifications. The electronic components were prefabricated, but we assembled them within 
our specifications, and the release mechanism was printed in three, uh, was 3D printed using PLA. All right, so um, we did some basic testing. Now, in these tests, um, you will see some. These tests were basically failures, um, and the first failure was because, as um, Daniel um, said, um, one of the antennas of the old remote control. It was basically broken, and we didn't notice that until the bulk of zero um, flew at a higher distance away from the, from the radio control. As you can see there, once it started flying um, a little bit higher distance, it lost signal and it completely fell down. Ooh, crap. Yes. And then um, the second failure was basically the power module. The power module basically um, burned out, um, and this also caused um, for the bulk of zero to fall down. Now, some things that we took from, from these experiences is okay, we, we had a problem, we had to try to see what was the problem and how to solve it. And then um, the other thing we took from this is that our um, casing did serve its purpose, basically it did um, protect the hardware that was inside, which could easily be broken when it fell down. Our total cost came out roughly to uh, 1,284, 136, and this includes the 3D printing, the, the motor for the plot, and uh, using different parts for, for the quadcopter. Uh, the global learning and sustainability, uh, like again, some of, the, some of the materials that are made uh, could be recycled, like the carbon, the carbon fiber structure could be repurposed or downcycled. Uh, the lithium iron battery could be recycled, although by doing that, uh, the price will go up uh, like five times more. And the uh, PLA plastic components is also could be recycled. And this uh, is done by the standards, uh, the ASME codes of ethics, that is a system of, a system of units. The FAA US standards, the ASME composite standard, and the SA consumer electronic standards. And here is a video. Yeah, okay. Uh, the question 
I wanted to ask was um, I saw a lot of work done on safety factors on grippers. Was there any safety factor work on the actual uh, full copter? Uh, and the other question tied to that is failure modes effects analysis. Did you do any risk assessment at all um, on this design? Uh, ask it that way. The risk assessment in terms of the well, typically, air, you know, devices you put in the sky should you should have redundant design. Right. And you gave me two examples of, of the system failing. Right. Um, did you do any risk assessment? No, we, we did not. We um, we were mainly like worried about so we we were given the quadcopter in terms of it was flying, and our main uh, project with this goal was to fix the release mechanism. The release mechanism on a previous on the previous quadcopter was tossing ball. So we had the issue of the quadcopter not only jumping up, but it was also jumping back too. So that was causing a lot of instability. So the main goal of our of our project was to fabricate the release mechanism. And then we also went in and Ramon designed the the, the cover for the for the quadcopter to ensure that the components were okay. But no, we did not do any research. Do any research assessment. Okay, the other question I want to throw out is on the cameras. Cameras function? Yes. Yes, we yes, have yeah. looking about being there too. Um, and could you see the target for the uh, for the ball? Well we haven't we were thinking about that, but that, that one kinda came up kinda like towards the end. We were thinking about putting two cameras instead of one facing forward and one facing down so that you could see the target. Yeah, I would have thought that would be like, the purpose of the camera. Was no, the camera, the, see the, purpose the, the, camera the purpose of this camera, the purpose of this camera was for the bridge inspection. Not for the purpose of aiming at the fire. Because it, it really is just to test the, the chemical within, within the grenade. So you can't, you will see where you're dropping the bomb. Not, not, rather not see the quadcopter somewhere and then trying to like aim through the quadcopter. But that is a good that is a good idea. And we came up, we we tried we thought up of it kind of too late and also like budget budget wise you need to more you need another, to add another camera you need to program it you need to put certain electronics in there and those electronics are not cheap. Yeah, for future work we we also were surprised by how much um, weight like payload you could carry. Um, um, when we were given the the pop up initially it, could, it was only able to carry payload from like four to five pounds. So we were very worried about okay. Um, about how much our release mechanism had a weight and all the components. But we actually saw that um, when the, our pilot was flying it, we would actually just blew it in 25% throttle and he could, he could fly it very well. So we're like, okay, um, next time we could put even more release mechanisms and so it could, you know, it could um, um, ex um, extinguish more fire. So um, for future work, we would do that and put a camera on the bottom for the starting position. Any comments? Yes, please. Just a couple comments and then uh, questions. Just one thing I noticed was in the beginning, um, it was tough to tell what your specific part of was the project. So just be careful with that. And then this kind of corollary with that, you spent about eight, nine minutes discussing each individual component of the quadcopter. And if the main goal of this was to solely design the claw on the bottom, you can kind of do that in an overall aspect and then talk about your specific um, project, you know, so be careful with that. So, well, yeah. the reason why I went through the, through the, through the, um, I put together and each component was because we were given the quadcopter itself and it was supposed to be flying, but it, it really didn't fly. It was flying kind of sketchy. And so I kind of wanted to know, like, show what, what actual equipment was supposed to be there rather than the, the, the made up equipment. Because this was supposed to be a power distribution board and it was way too heavy. It was long. So, so what I would say then is, um, no one's telling you what the exact thing that you're supposed to be doing is until the very end, right? So if your original goal was just to redesign the claw and that's it, and that's what you guys said you were doing, um, I would include the other part too. So redesign of the quadcopter and the claw, right? So that way, just all the audience knows the work that you did. That's the most important part. And then can you go to the, the simulation of the claw itself really quick? In terms of like the stresses associated. So the very first slide of this, the very, the, right before this one, actually. So um, I guess the analysis was you figured out what the weight of the ball was, yes. right? And then what, so you divided that by four for the four pads and then you used that as the load. So what I would say is, um, in that case, what you're doing is the, only the minimum, right? Only the minimum stress 
associated with holding that ball. In actuality, the gripper mechanism applies the force as well, right? right? And obviously, we don't see any sort of deformation, right? But that could be a major concern. So the design should in entail both sides, right? One, you have to have enough to hold the ball. And the other is, oh no, if we're holding the ball too tight, we might break our, our arms, right? So you got to include that other half in there uh, to make sure that you don't have any sort of failure. Okay. Any other questions? Any other comments? Thank you very much. All right. And our last theme for this session, teammate, is coming up. And their work is titled Pneumatic Pass-Through Impact Wrench. <laughs> 